Welcome to SARM's railway grade crossing information sharing videos. First off, we'd like to mention some safety items. We recommend you wear some personal protective equipment while you're taking these measurements, at minimum a high visibility vest. And while you're out on the road, uh, never turn your back to oncoming traffic unless you have a spotter that can uh, watch that traffic for you. We're now going to be starting to measure the clearance distance of this crossing. This would be the area where vehicles are not to enter while a train is here. So the first step of this is to measure 5 meters off of the track to your approaching laneway and to the nearest edge of that approaching laneway. So as we're going to measure the far lane over here, we're going to measure to the center line of the road, 5 meters off of the rail. here with our center line and going out to your road edge here this is the line a vehicle is not supposed to enter while a train is at the crossing now if you have a sign such as this and it is outside of this line you're to measure two meters out from that sign and that will be the clearance line you use what we've marked here is the minimum needed for this crossing we're now going to measure the retreating side of the clearance distance envelope. We've already measured the approaching side to the crossing. This is the side that a vehicle must exit after they've gone through. So here, instead of 5 meters measured perpendicularly off the tracks, we're now going to measure 2.4 meters. And because we also still want to measure to the nearest edge of the lane, instead of measuring to the center line as we did with the approach, we now have to measure to the edge of the roadway. As you can see, the tape is at a 90 degree angle with the tracks. We've marked 2.4 meters with the edge of our roadway. And then if you put a line across the road here, that is your retreating clearance distance envelope. We're now going to complete the final step of measuring clearance distance. This will be the measurement that you need to put onto your paperwork. So now we're just going to measure the distance from the approaching end of the clearance distance to the retreating end of the clearance distance. This gives us the distance over the crossing that no vehicles are to be in. And as I said, that measurement goes onto your paperwork. So I've already driven a spike down at the approaching end of the clearance distance. And we're gonna measure down the center line of the road here to the retreating and see what we get. So the measurement for this crossing was 21.8 meters. On your form, you're supposed to put it in in millimeters. That'll be 21,800 millimeters. We're now here at a new site, again, laying out our clearance distance envelope. We're here at the approach side. We've measured our 5.0 meters, 90 degrees off of the rail. And we've again measured it to the nearest edge of the lane, which in this case is the edge of the roadway. Now, as you can see in the background though, we have a sign that would dictate that the clearance distance needs to be two meters in front of that sign. As such, the five meters we measured is not adequate enough. We need to increase our clearance distance two meters in front of the sign. As you can see here, we've done that. So now your clearance distance is from this point to the retreating edge of the clearance distance on the other side of the crossing. 